Don't we have a wonderful choir? Our scripture reading today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verse 13 through 21. It can be found on the few Bibles at 1520 or on the screen. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by the boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw the large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so that they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up the 12 baskets of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. May God add a blessing to the words, and may we never doubt the power of God. More than enough more than enough to give thanks. There's a little story in Luke chapter 21 about a widow who comes into the temple. She quietly approaches the offering box and drops a couple of coins in and heads off. Jesus stops his teaching mid-sentence and points her out to the disciples. Most people wouldn't have even seen her. So many of the others who approached the box made a big show of it as they were putting in their large offering envelopes in there. But she came quietly, not her. She wasn't going to show off. But her gift catches Jesus' attention. It's reminiscent of the scene in Luke 8 where a woman simply brushes against Jesus and he stops and says, Who touched me? The disciples are amazed because they have such a crowd and everybody's pressing in. How can he say, Who touched me? It's been said that it is the little things that matter. And what we see in stories like these is the fact that Jesus notices the little things and he blesses them. I think that's the point in our story today. You see, Jesus and the disciples were dealing with the terrible news that John the Baptist had been killed. John, a cousin of Jesus. John, who was a prophet, who had had brought many people to a point of repentance in their life and and a readiness to start over, who was preparing the way for Jesus, and and then they hear that he was killed. Like so many of the news stories, we hear that disheartened you and I. And it says that they decided that they were going to leave the crowds and they were going to go to another place, and as they, they traveled Uh, The crowds just seemed to grow, and when they got to the place, the crowds were so large that that Jesus just stopped. He began to heal some of them, and then he began to teach. I'm sure that they were exhausted both physically and emotionally at that time. And so finally, as dusk settles, a few of the disciples come to Jesus and say to him, Master, send them away. It's supper time. It's been a long day and and we can't possibly feed them all. Let them go into the town and get something to eat. You know, my friend Ray, Ray Diptolsky, often accuses me of doing something like that when it's supper time. 
you know, looking for a free meal and and maybe that was the case. Some of them were staying so long that they were looking for something and the disciples said, we, 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 we're not buying. Send them away. Jesus responds with an answer that stuns them. He says, why do they need to leave? Go ahead. You give them something to eat. You Give them something to eat. You know, there are times in our lives when it seems like we're overwhelmed by the world, where we we just don't have enough to be able to do any more, whether it's of our time and our energy or of our resources financial. And it seems like everybody or everything is always asking for more, and uh, we want to send them away, and we don't want to have to deal with it. And so you can understand maybe some of the shock when, when Jesus says, you give them something to eat. They're looking around and they're going day to day. They hardly have enough to feed themselves. And how could they possibly do that? And then we read in John chapter 6 that a young boy comes up. And you know, this story of the feeding of the 5,000 is in all four Gospels. And usually when you see something that's in all four Gospels, there is an important point to be made. This was something that the disciples took notice of and said, you got to make sure you tell this story. So this young boy in John 6, we see it's a young boy who comes up, maybe heard them talking, saying they needed to feed these people. And the young boy, and you know, children are so innocent. We know that, that, that uh, Jesus always blessed the children and, and wanted them to run. He said, this is this kind of, this innocence This hopefulness that children have is what we all need to have. And this young boy comes up and says to the disciples, here, will this help? Now, you know, you know adults, right? You're, most of you are adults. Somebody comes up and you look, five loaves and two fish. Yeah, that'll help a lot. Probably one of the disciples said to the other, well, give it to him. See what he could do with it. Probably jesting or joking, maybe. Now, they had seen Jesus do some amazing things. But I, and I don't know this isn't biblical, but I I can almost guarantee that there was not one of the disciples that believed that five loaves and two fish would be enough. But they said, what do we have to lose? And so they bring it to Jesus. Jesus says, bring it to me. And he takes it and he looks up to heaven and he blesses it. And then he breaks the bread, similar to what we do when we gather at the communion table, dedicating, offering it to God. And he says, go ahead, you feed them now. And sure enough, wouldn't you know it, that's when the miracle takes place. We don't know exactly how it happened, whether the loaves kept dividing in every basket, there was more or whatnot. But at the end of the day, it says that all were fed, and not only were they fed. You know, sometimes you go to a buffet and there's not much, and so you take a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and then you go out and you get something to eat afterwards. Am I the only one that does that? (laughs) Lori says yes. It says that all had to eat and all were satisfied. There was enough so that they could eat to their heart's content. And then it says when it was all said and done, they went around and picked up the scraps and there were 12 baskets that they brought back, which provided a basket for each of them for the next day. From nothing to more than enough, a reason to give thanks for sure. You know, for the last month, we've been talking about the Lord's table and how God's gracious acts allow us to step out and share our faith. That's what the church is all about. You know, sometimes I think we get caught up in this idea that church is about coming and sitting for an hour if we can stand it and sing a couple of hymns and do a little praying and listen to a message and then we go and that's what our faith is all about. But the truth is God calls the church together to be reconcilers of the world, to change the world. I remember being in a class several years ago where, where somebody uh, said, well, what happens if the church fails? What's plan B? Does it say that in the Bible? And, and the person said, there is no plan B. God created the church to be the hope of the world. And before you get thinking, well, I don't know if our church is, then we need to ask ourselves, are we Because we are the church. Are we doing what God has called us to do? And I know a lot of churches have a lot of excuses. We, We don't have enough money. We don't have enough volunteers. We don't have enough time. We don't have enough energy. But the truth is, is that 
We all have more than enough to do what God has called us to do. He prepares us. He, he sets aside the things that we need. I, I like the story, and you've probably heard it before. The minister was up giving a stewardship sermon on a Sunday like this, and he said, I've got good news and bad news. And the people kind of, you know, know the pastor would always do things. And he says, there is good news that we have more than enough money for the building project and to sustain all of the ministries for the next year. And everybody started clapping and cheering. And they said, wow, there must have been something happened that the pastor has this great news. And then he said, well, here's the bad news. It's still in your pockets and it hasn't made it to the offering plate yet. You know, the truth is, is that we do have more than enough. We have more than enough time. We have more than enough money. We have more than enough talent to be able to answer the call that God has put on our church as He's put on every church so that we might be the hope of the world by sharing Jesus Christ. Sometimes we look at ourselves and we say we've only got a couple of loaves and a couple of fish. When we say that, we forgot that we need to bring it to Jesus. You see, that's, that's where the disciples learned the lesson, and that's the lesson that we have to learn too, that when we give our offering, whatever it is, when we give it, and we give it to Jesus, and then amazing things happen. I, I just thought about this weekend, a couple of little things. Operation Christmas Child put together 75 boxes. Now, not, that's not the most we've ever done, but 75 boxes that will go to children and bring them a glimmer of hope and joy. And you know, Franklin Graham, Samaritan's Purse, Operation Christmas Child, not only do they give those boxes, but then they offer all kinds of other resources for these children and these families to try to make a difference. And then I think about yesterday morning. Now, I was just there to take pictures. They had, I don't know if they had donuts. Did you guys get any donuts? Oh, I missed my opportunity to do what I'm good at, you know? But we, we had six or seven folks who went over to the Johnny Cake Center and, and volunteered over there for a while, kind of sorting things and helping them with their ministry. You see, their thrift store provides a lot of the money for the ministries that they do to the poor in our community. Think about that. And then Brian and Skip were off and they were getting the, the food shopping for the food bags for uh, uh, you know, our Acts 2 program and, and they brought that back, laid it out and all that. And I think just little things by people volunteering making a big difference, offering it to the service of the Lord. And so what we're going to do is, is after church today, we'll invite you for a light lunch. Now, I don't know if there'll be enough for everybody. No, <laughs> But we invite you for a light lunch because we want, the Stewardship Committee wants you to know we are so thankful for all you do, all you give, all your participation. And so come down, grab a finger sandwich, and be with us as we thank you for your participation in this ministry that changes lives now, no one family, no one person can do it all. Each of us simply needs to bring what we have to the table. It may look like a couple of loaves and fish, a meager offering in comparison to the huge needs that there are in this community and out in the world. But in Jesus' hands, it can be just what is needed for the day. You know, in a few weeks, our Jewish friends will be celebrating Hanukkah. And in that celebration, they remember how their oil was almost used up. But God provided just enough oil to get them through the dark days. The truth is that many of us remember times like that. And we say it was by the grace of God that we got through. God is a miracle worker. When we take what we have and give it to Him, He multiplies the effects and miracles happen. I was at a conference not too long ago. It was a chaplaincy conference. And they said, you know, miracles happen every day. It's just that most of us are looking elsewhere and we miss them. You see, that's the good news of the gospel. That even as we hear these horrific stories of things happening in other parts of the world, which seem to grab the headlines and tug at our hearts, there are stories, amazing stories of God's love and God's, God's presence every corner of the world. And it's often done by people like you and me who just see a need and fill it or who are part of a group that goes out to do something that will change the world, or at least that little corner of the world. 
The widow was commended because she gave from the heart, not because she gave so much. The boy was blessed because he gave when he heard of the need. The truth is that we've all been blessed. We have more than enough even in these challenging times. Sometimes I don't like to watch the news because there's always something to fret over. Whether it's the elections or the stock market or interest rates or more layoffs, a war in Ukraine, a hurricane barreling up the coast, it's enough to make you crazy. But I think the disciples' initial problem in our passage was that they started focusing on the problem and forgot they had the problem solver. When they took that, what they had, and gave it to him, he multiplied it and a miracle was born. I want to close with a story that I read a number of years ago, but it was shared by Dr. Russell Conwell. And he said, one afternoon there was a little girl at church who wanted to go to the Sunday school class so badly. They had the opposite problem where we have, where we don't have a lot of Sunday school children, but a lot of rooms. They had a lot of children, but they had a very small room. The church was not very large, and, and in the Sunday school room there were so many children, she couldn't get in. The pastor happened by and saw her. She was crying outside the door and and said, what's the matter? And she said, I really want to go. I wish we had a bigger room. The pastor said, well, you know what? Come in with me. We'll sneak in and we'll, we'll sneak into the back. And so they were there, took her by the hand, led her in. And she said to him, boy, that was great when it was all over. I really hope someday we have a big enough room so that all the children could hear the stories I heard today. She was a a lovely little thing, according to the story, but in a few weeks she became sick, and then she died. At her funeral, the father came up to the pastor and and mentioned to the pastor how much he appreciated, because the daughter told what he had done, got her into the room, and said, you know, she started from that day saving money for a building fund for the church. Again, a child who has a vision bigger than the adult's. And, and the father said, I know it's not much, but maybe this will help get things going. And he, he took his hand and he put 57 cents in the pastor's hand. The pastor looked at it. He knew it wasn't going to be able to buy very much, but he thought maybe it was seeds for something great to happen. And so he, he took that money and he gone to the trustees meeting. Jim, are you listening? 57 cents. He went to the trustees meeting and he he told the story about the little girl and and the smaller building and he said, she had more faith than we do. And so she wanted to start it and this is the seed money. What are we going to do? And so the trustees voted and they've been talking about building an addition or a new church building for a number of years just like we do in churches all the time. We talk about things, big plans, hopes we have and yet we don't have the money, we don't have the resources, we don't have the people and so we put it off and we never really take it seriously. And the trustees said maybe this is a sign that we should do something. And one of the men said, well, I know a person who has a piece of property for sale on Broad Street. Maybe I'll go talk to him. And so he went and he shared the story and showed him the 57 cents and said, you know, we've decided we're committed to a building program and we're looking for the right piece of property and we think you may have it. And the man said, I'm going to sell it to you. And he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hold the mortgage I'm going to charge a 5% interest and that 57 cents is going to be your first year of mortgage payments so you can get this project going. You know, the person who shared the story said that they had to check it out because it sounded too unreal, too unbelievable. It's kind of like the the fact that you could feed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. The difference is God. And so as I think about the year ahead, the year coming, and what we want to do as a congregation, we're asking big things, we're inviting you to get involved, to find your place, to find your seat at the table. I believe that when we ask God, God will make it happen. Every dream we have will be done so that God will get the glory. And so I want to thank you for being part of this and giving your 57 cents or whatever it is giving your time and your energy and lifting up your prayers and your thoughts. Because when that happens, we have more than enough to give thanks. More than enough. So God bless you and thank you on this Thanksgiving Day. Amen. We're going to close our service.